with that, I'd like to call the meeting to order. And we're going to get right into what we all know is a very uh, momentous day here, a bittersweet one for us. Um, actually, before we do, I just see Amy Great Grace Wells walking in, who is our host for today. So, Amy, he took a queen on the spot, but do you, would you like to say a quick welcome to everyone? Welcome to the Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for joining us today here in Hyde Park. And um, you would think it was pretty sleepy in the winter and in the rain, but we've been quite busy getting ready for the summer season, hiring summer seasonals, probably as all of you have been doing as well, and um, just getting ready. Um, one of the highlights that I wanted to highlight is we are proud to be hosting a two-year Mellon Fellow, Mellon Postdoc Bureau Fellowship. She is focused on um, disability representation and disability history with um, President Roosevelt. So she's planning some new exhibits in the park this next year and, um, and has already been posting some articles on our website. And we're really excited to see where that goes, um, along with hopefully opening Top Cottage this summer and uh, a lot of other good things. So um, stay tuned and thank you for joining us today. Thank you so much. Before we move further to the agenda, we usually start with hellos and introductions. So again, I'm Kevin, this is Meg. Why don't we go around and just everyone just say who you are and then we'll go Sure, Heather Gerlach, New York State DEC, Hudson River Program Supervisor, and District Coordinator. I'm Betsy Jacks, Director of the Thomas Cole National Historic Site. Reporting uh, in progress. I'm reporting in progress. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, Sean Hammond, representing Assembly uh, Minnesota. Hello, Johanna Poor. I'm the Orange County historian representing Orange County. Good morning. I'm Donna Winter, Assistant Commissioner with New York State's Department of Agriculture and Markets. Hi, I'm Vincent Altieri. I'm here for Rockford County Executive. Hi, I'm Linda Bonner. I'm the Brunswick County Council person. Cindy Lanzetta with the Greenland Conservancy. Good morning, Linda Malavi, Empire State Development, representing Hope Bank. Uh, Mark McGlynn, OGS, representing Commissioner Moore. Scott Croft, Hudson River Boat and Yacht Club Association. Uh, good morning, Joanne Fernandez, uh, representing the Department of State, uh, serve as the Chief of Staff there. Williams from Saratoga County. Sarah Arnold representing Washington County. Angela Henry representing Dutchess County. Lance McMillan, Regional Director of DOT here in Hudson Valley representing our Commissioner Marie Teresa Mingus. Good morning, everyone. I'm Jane Lachlan. I'm the treasurer of the Greenway Conservancy. Uh, Wayne Aldridge, vice chair of the council. Yeah, we'll get back to you. Oh, sure. <laughs> we'll start over here. Scott Keller, executive director of the Greenway. I'm Laura O'Shea, deputy director of Thomas Cole National Historic Center. Morning, Elaine Hayes, Executive Director of Mount Hulu Land Store Site. Al Lanzetta, uh, here as a guest from Sydney Lanzetta. Uh, good morning, Larry Schopper, Village Administrator, Village of Irving. Good morning, Priscilla Brendler, Executive Director of Greater Hudson Heritage Network. Of 
Cornell Reeves, dear friend. Uh, <laughs> I just wanted to uh, say I'm also with the Office of Parks Recreation and Historic Preservation in the community. Yes. Morning, Nick Del Centro, Supervisor of Town of East Fishkill. No relation to Scott Allen. <laughs> Carl Beer, uh, retired from National Park Service Urbans and Trails Program, currently on the Elster County Trails Advisory Committee and moderator of the Mickey Duchess Trails Roundtable. Good morning, everyone. Will Tatum, Duchess County Historian, representing Duchess County Government. Rena Schindeldecker, Executive Director of the Hudson Highlands Lands Trust. I'm Dan Jensen, I'm on the video staff. Good morning, Kelly, Kelly Jutero on behalf of the New York State Department of Environmental Conservation and Sales. Shannon Chen, Shannon Chen, Director of Operations at the Greenway. Now we've got all of our friends online, so why don't we start with Sarah Olson. Hi, I'm Sarah Olson, um, Secretary of the Conservancy. Okay, and so the Igas? Or Sigas? Good morning, so the Igas, uh, part of the committee. How about Emily? Tura. <clears throat> Hello, I am Emily Matara. I am the examiner at the Division of Health. And Melissa Pierce is reigning. Melissa, are you here? Okay, Jay Daniels. <clears throat> You're muted, you, Jane, if you can come off mute. Okay. How about Skip? Yes, good morning. Skip Miscatelli, community council member of New York City. That's great. Okay, Matthew Schneid? Hi, I'm Matt Schneid, community council member from New York County. Okay, and Anthony Carr? <clears throat> I don't know. And Ferguson. M. Ferguson. Yes, how are you? Sorry, it's Anthony Carr. I'm the uh, superintendent of public works and village engineer with the village of Pleasant. Okay, and A2 land, PC2N. Sorry, we can't hear you. Can you put in the maybe type in the chat? Do it by yourself? Do that record? We can't, we can't hear you. And anyone else we missed? Good. On the phone? It's a 518 number? I don't know. And uh, Mike Ferg and Mike Ferg is the uh, road maintenance board, also with the village of Pleasant Hill, the Pond Public Works. Okay, so we, we know that um, this is a, a bittersweet day because uh, this is Scott's last meeting and we almost didn't let you introduce yourself, so sorry. <laughs> um, so we have a special presentation that we're going to be making to him that is from uh, all of us and Wint Aldrich is going to be um, our spokesperson for that. Thank you, Meg. <clears throat> we'll start with a certificate of achievement presented to Scott Keller 
Now, some of you have seen this in the package that was sent to you, but those in the audience perhaps have not. And so, uh, with great pleasure, uh, we read it. Honoring Scott Keller for his 38 years of talented leadership and devoted service to the natural, cultural, and recreational resources of the Hudson Valley and the economic well-being and quality of life of its citizens. First on the staff of the Heritage Task Force for the Hudson River Valley, beginning in 1986, then after 1991 with the Greenway Council and Conservancy, and additionally with the National Heritage Area following its establishment in 1996. Especially as Executive Director since 2016, but also in so many capacities over the years, Scott's has been a career of large achievement and lasting influence, worthy of being told and song and story. Highlights include superb fiscal management and budgeting with both state appropriations and federal allocations, managing and advancing a multiple grants program that is aided in community planning, heritage, and environmental education, and trails and public access. Examples include Scott's coordination of the region's portion of the Empire State Trail, the establishment of the Hudson River Water Trail, the Great Hudson River Paddle, promoting and hosting a multitude of annual Valley Ramble events, and the popular Train Tour app. His capable coordination with the Greenway boards and their ever-changing composition has been a hallmark of his work, as has been his considerateness towards his colleagues on the staff as encourager, mentor, and fellow worker. As was said in tribute to another conservation leader many years ago, so it can be said of Scott Keller, of the good that he has done, there shall never come an end. Presented this sixth day of March 2024 by the Joint Boards of the Hudson River Valley Greenway, signed by Meg Downey and Kevin Burke. Thank you. It was in a, uh, a print shop in Philadelphia, 
uh, and we were able to snap it up. And we had Frank, man and Frank in Albany, uh, and Tracy herself uh, donated a wonderful antique frame that's appropriate to the, to the image. Uh, and so uh, we have that. And if you'll forgive me for just a little bit of art history before we unveil it, uh, you should know that, that Cole uh, painted many, many images, of course, but he was particularly well known for two series of four paintings each. One was The Course of Empire, and one was The uh, Voyage of Life. And in The Voyage of Life, you see uh, an infant in a, in a small boat, uh, seemingly uh, on her own, or his own, uh, drifting on a river, wonderful uh, forest all around. Uh, you have to worry a little about it. Then you see off on one side is a guardian angel uh, that is going to take care of the future of the child. In the next image, it's a youth uh, in a similar uh, uh, vessel uh, propelling toward who knows what a destiny. And then the third uh, a man uh, in the full, uh, full force of his manhood, and then finally uh, an old uh, geezer, white bearded, uh, drifting toward uh, the end of his life. Uh, well, uh, uh, Cole was interested in having, I think, some engravings made. But the person to whom uh, he had sold or had been commissioned uh, to, to make this series, The Voyage of Life, uh, had a gallery of his own and he didn't want the public to be buying images of these paintings because nobody would come and see them in his private gallery in New York. Uh, and so Cole had to make another series of the same paintings. And that's the one that was used by the engraver starting in 1849, the year after Cole's death. Uh, and this particular engraving uh, is uh, the, the image of uh, youth, and uh, it shows uh, it shows the uh, the young fellow uh, drifting. Or I don't see a paddle in his hand, but I mean he's moving on the on the what we could say the Cascade Creek. It's a little small to be the Hudson uh, towards some objective which is very faintly sketched in in the background that looks like a cross between uh, the Royal Pavilion at Brighton and the Taj Mahal. <laughs> and I can only think that if somebody tried to build that in the foothills of the Catskill, Thomas Cole would be the first person to go to court to stop it. Uh, but many men, he thought that was an appropriate uh, image of, of this young fellow's future. Um, and, and of course, the guardian angel is standing by to be sure that uh, all goes well. Uh, or maybe it's the goddess of good fortune, uh, not sure. Uh, but in any event, uh, in 1849, uh, the year after Cole's death, uh, this was created by Snilly, the, the engraver, and then actually produced up in Boston, uh, and uh, began to be sold. And there was a problem and they couldn't continue uh, with the other three for another several years. So this is the earliest important engraving of the work of Thomas Cole to come on the market. And uh, it's in excellent condition uh, and it's a, a source of great pleasure to us that uh, we can present it to the hero of the hour, Scott Keller. Scott, you have blessed this organization and the Hudson Valley for so many years. Uh, now we just bless you for, for your future.
How's it going, everybody? Sean Hannon from Assembly of Hands Office. I'm also doing double duty today for Assembly Member Chris Ekis, who can't be here today. They're both up in Albany for legislative session. I don't know how to top that, but <laughs> I do have an official New York State Assembly citation for you, Scott. Thank you for your years of service, preserving our Hudson Valley Parks trails, and um, your service to our community. So thank you very much. I just want to thank Scott for everything that you've done for the National Heritage Area and um, for all of us. So on behalf of the Park Service, thank you. expressed here today and over the last few months by people in the room, on Zoom, and many more not here today. Thank you. I want to thank all the board members, staff, agency partners, municipal officials, volunteers, and members of the public who have made the past 38 years so special for me and enabled us, the Greenway, to accomplish great things. I want to thank my family for putting up with the long hours and missed birthdays, anniversaries, and other special events that those of us in public service are so often unable to attend due to work demands. Thank you for that. I think Wink covered the highlights with his uh, certificate of achievement and I will not keep you longer by going over everything we did, but please know that I will almost treasure the time we had and the things we accomplished working together. Thank you. process of uh, determining the next executive director, which will happen soon, and I'll tell you more about that later. But in the meantime, um, we want to appoint an interim executive director. We do have the, um, you all set? Okay. 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 So, and that would be, um, Beth would be serving as in, in that role, and um, a cup and care. And, um, So I'd like to put that up uh, for approval by the councils. Bob Elliott, first and second. And uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Great. Well, welcome, Beth. Thank you. Just uh, not to uh, 
We labor the point of what everyone else has said, but just on behalf of the staff, myself, Dan, Shannon, Cody, um, we want to thank Scott for his years of leadership, inspiration, and of course, friendship. We are so fortunate to have had the opportunity to work with him and for him, and to benefit from his years of experience and dedication to the principles of the Greenway. We will work hard to continue his legacy of service to the communities of the Hudson Valley, and we wish him all the best in his well-deserved retirement. Thank you, Beth. All right, should we get to the work now? Yes. All right. <laughs> Um, first item of business is the presentation on the Hudson River Estuary Program and the Greenway. Um, Heather Gearloff from D is the DEC Hudson River Program Supervisor and Estuary Coordinator. One important part of our mission uh, is somewhat vaguely spelled out in Section 44-0113 of our legislation. Powers and duties of the Conservancy, the Conservancy shall have the power to continue to provide certain programmatic contractual services to the department as heretofore been the practice. What the legislature references is the topic of our presentation today. Rather than spoil the surprise, I will introduce our presenter, Heather Gearloff. Heather has been at DEC since 2002 in a variety of roles, uh, including forest ranger, ecology biologist, marine biologist, Manager of Marine Habitat and Hudson River National Estuary. I've been saying that for 30 years. <laughs> Hudson River National Estuary Research Reserve. She is currently the Hudson River Program Supervisor and Estuary Coordinator. She supervises and coordinates the Hudson River Estuary Management with four Hudson River focused programs Marine Habitat, Marine Fisheries. Hudson River National Estuary and Research Reserve, see I told you I could do it, <laughs> and Hudson River Estuary Program. She also um, oversees and coordinates the Hudson River Estuary Management Advisory Council and Hudson River Estuary Partners. She values building meaningful relationships with partners and stakeholders to protect, preserve, restore, and enhance the Hudson River Estuary and watershed. When not working on key Hudson River issues, you can find her spending time with family, cheering on the sidelines of an athletic field, gardening, crafting, or hiking. Heather, come on up and uh, show the screen. Here. Thank you. Uh, Thank you so much, and thank you, Scott, for inviting me. This is an honor because this is a special meeting for everybody, especially me being able to be in this role and actually getting to get some of the benefits of working with Scott since the research reserve manager and in my role today. Um, so what's interesting is that today is very close to my one-year anniversary of being in this role, which is a kind of fun fact. Um, as we've noted, it sometimes feels a little bit longer than that. <laughs> It's a great position, and, and I've really been enjoying everything I do. All right. Um, so just a little bit about what we do, which is that my role and my staff's role is really to implement the Hudson River Estuary Management Program in honoring the um, Hudson River um, Management Act. Um, that's really important because it's a DDC and state's commitment to managing the Hudson River Estuary. And in that act, the coordinated role is actually named in that act. So, um, which is great because it basically shows the state's commitment. Um, there are many things in that act. Um, one of the items that we have is that we have an advisory committee. Uh, the other thing is that we have a coordinator's report, which we have to deliver to the legislature um, each year. And so that's not something that I hope that maybe you, um, as the Conservancy, the Council, Greenway, Partners, maybe have seen our coordinated coordinator's report. Um, we also do strategic planning, and that can be captured and seen in our action agenda. So we have an action agenda that's active from 2021 to 2025, and we're also thinking about and editing our next one, which is the 2026. So it seems like we're always planning uh, for the future. So as Scott mentioned, um, my role has a long title. Um, there is no extra pay for extra words in titles, although that's what I'm striving for um, with that title. 
Um, what's interesting is that Tedder is a little bit different than my predecessor, Fran Dunwall. You're probably very much familiar with her. Um, she was the estuary coordinator. In addition to the coordinator role, you'll also see the title says Hudson River Program Supervisor. And what that's doing is expressing the work that I do to coordinate and supervising four programs. So what you see in front of you is an org chart just because I feel like this can be a little bit confusing. This is a good way for me to express how I do my work in that I have um, four programs. You can, the type is really small because of the way that this um, presents, but really it's essentially, you'll see some of the people that you're used to seeing. Um, the Hudson River Estuary Program Manager is Ingrid Heckel. Um, she was previously in the Conservation Land Use Team. So you'll see a lot of names, Laura Heaney, Scott Cuppet under her. Um, you'll see Sarah Fernald does now the Hudson River National Estuary Research Reserve Manager. Um, she was a research coordinator before. Greg Kenny leads the fisheries team. And Angela Skimitzi is leading up the regulatory work. All been working in our program for quite a few years and bring a lot of experience and benefit. Then what you'll see is that with my role, I am the point of contact with the um, advisory committee and the action data. And that's because we want those to express all four programs and how we work together. So why am I here today though is really to highlight our partnership, which is one of the things that we've done together. And actually our partnership has made it so that we've been super successful. And I hope that today is just one part of our conversation as we go forward and think about how we can do more of this in the future. So with, Hudson, with the Greenways Help, we've received over $1.6 million to support the Hudson River National Pestering Research Reserve. And that's mostly supporting our long-term monitoring, which is really important on the Hudson. Um, in addition, we were able to partner to implement the pilot, the Piermont Shoreline Pilot Project, and that is um, something that was just recently completed, and we're actually launching into the next phase. And in addition, the Ramble, that's something that we've all co-worked together for over 20 years. So, really great programs. Um, and I'm here, you're going to see a pictures of our camera project because it's really a really fun project and it's something to get super excited over. And actually without your help, we wouldn't have been able to get to this point, which is installation, monitoring and success, and launching to the next phase. But long-term monitoring is something that we shouldn't uh, not highlight. In fact, it's something that's incredibly important. And with the long-term monitoring, we've, we've had more than 50 publications. Um, it, it has been the backbone of our collaborative programs. Um, a couple of key ones that you might be familiar with would be the Sustainable Shorelines Project. Another one is Dams and Sediment on the Hudson, which is analyzing what the impact might be for a dam rule on sediment uh, control on the Hudson. All really important things that help us think about long-term um, monitoring, also how we then restore you know, on the Hudson in the future, and then what are the impacts? So all of that is really important and really exciting. Um, and we just applied for more construction funding, so $2.9 million, and that's actually in the conjunction with Pets of Honor Greenway. And actually, without Scott's help, we probably wouldn't be able to do that. So that's where we are, um, really amazing, and I think we can have opportunities to go further. So what we're launching in 2024 is piloting SAV, or Submerged Aquatic Vegetation Restoration on the Hudson. Um, this has the potential to really frame and lead how we restore important habitat on the Hudson. So um, I'm thankful for the Greenways partnership on that, and I, I look to see that that's going to be a five-year project, and really I hope much longer than five years. Um, the Hudson River um, Environments and Conditions uh, Observing System, which is RECOS, is a uh, system which we monitor the conditions of the Hudson along the entire stretch, including some of Mohawk now. Um, and that is something that we find is going to need expansion and more support because everybody recognizes that long-term monitoring and understanding the ecosystem conditions is really important for thinking about fish species, habitat, and resilience on the Hudson. So I think in our future, we have opportunity to expand that and support that. And then another key piece is the Hudson River Estuary Program is a key partner or key lead on bring people to the Hudson Street areas of access points. So as we go forward, I think you'll see that we've tried to express that in our draft in 2026 to 2030 action agenda, which I'd love to hear more of your input on. But I, I really think that's where we can really work together to make sure that 
we're serving the people of Hudson Valley, then I think we can take the best parts of both our programs with that. Well, I only have five to ten minutes. I don't know how that went, but... Um, and I'm here. This is my contact information. I'd be available to answer any questions or come up with new ideas. Um, one thing I will know is that every time I come up to a person and say, I've got this idea, they somewhat cringe. So if anybody wants to join me in creating some of those cringe-worthy moments. That's been my mind. Me too. I did that. Any other questions? All right. Well, you can catch me after. Okay. 
Thank you again. Now we move to the business portion of the meeting, and that starts with a review of our agenda and any comments our board members might have. I do want to note one thing, which is under the National Heritage Area update. Mm -hmm. uh, Scott's going to give us an update on the uh, 2024 appropriation mm -hmm. process going on right now. So we might make a note of that. Mm -hmm. Any other comments on the agenda? Yes. Yes, it was joint. It was joint. Yes. But you remind me, for people who came in uh, after we started the meeting, we probably should get you on the record who's here. So you might just, uh, let's, anyone who walked in late, we should be on the record. So you want to go first, Kitty? Yes. Great, thank you. Is it here? Yeah. You already spoke, but yes, go ahead. Great. And in the back, anyone come in after we said our introduction is closed? Okay. Any other comments on the agenda? All right. Moving on, we've got to approve the minutes <clears throat> of our last meeting. Um, this is, uh, I guess it says here June 14th, but I think we, we met in December. Yes, December 8th, actually. Yeah, that should be corrected. We only get three people with this. So yes. Really so this is the December 8th meeting. And those are shared in advance. Any changes? If not, I'd call for a motion and second on the minutes. I thought it was December 6th. Is this the minor detail? Yes. December 6th, okay. Stand corrected, thank you. Bob, uh, motion, second? Okay, thank you. All in favor of adopting the minutes, please signify saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Now we have about the conservancy portion of the agenda, which is pretty full. Um, so let me turn it over to Scott. Last one. All right. Um, first item of business is designation of a new segment of the Greenway Trail. The Village to Village Trail in the town of Red Hook, Dutchess County, 7.25 miles. Um, they've requested designation of, of this connector trail, and it is a varied surfa surface trail that connects the villages of Tivoli and Red Hook. Is there anyone here from Tivoli or Red Hook that would care to comment on this? All right, Beth, do you have anything to add? Just, um, Um, we'll vote on everything at the end if that's yes. all right with you. Um, Conservancy trail grants would be the next item. We're looking to award $38,300. The first is for the village of Pleasantville, Westchester County. And they are seeking grant funding in the amount of $18,387.20, which is an extremely specific number, for the Nanigan Park Walkway Improvement Project. The Grants Committee recommends 18300 uh, The next two are for maintenance of the AHEAD trail, and if you don't vote for these, you have to go maintain the trail, just to <laughs> put that right out there. Uh, first is the Columbia Friends of the Electric Trail in Columbia County, and they are seeking grant funding in the amount of $12,500. Um, they maintain all of Columbia County with the exception of the village of Kinderhook and Valicia, and they also mow areas of tall vegetation in the town of Skodak in Rensselaer County. The Grants Committee recommends 12,500. Next one is for the Rensselaer Plateau Alliance in, in Rensselaer County. They're seeking grant funding in the amount of 7,500. They maintain the trail um, and the immediate edges of the trail in the town of Skodak in Rensselaer County. Any questions on the proposed grants? All right. Um, next item is accepting the 2022-23 audit. We have finally received that audit, which as you will recall was delayed when our previous auditor was forced to drop us of a as a client due to a lack of staff at their firm. It took us a while to find a new auditor. Apparently, auditors are scarce upon the ground in Albany, um, but I am pleased to report that our new auditors, Lutz, Selig, and Zaranda, have completed their audit issued a clean opinion with no management items or adjusting entries. 
And I want to thank Mary McCrell and Kelly Harrison who performed the audit and were very professional and easy to work with. Any questions on the audit? Jane, do you want to add anything? Just try to... uh, no, but I think we can all be very proud of where you that we have clean audits. Um, the next item is to adopt the 2022-23 Paris Annual Report. This is usually due in June. It was due in June of this year, but part of it is an audit, which we were not able to complete on time. Um, I have communicated with the folks at Paris. They were aware of the issue, and they are aware that we have not completed um, this. So we finalized our report to the Public Authorities Reporting Information System, Paris. Uh, this report comprises the bulk of your packet this morning. The board needs to adopt the report as submitted. Any questions on this one? Oh, thank God, because I didn't really understand it. <laughs> um, we also have to submit a multi-year budget to Paris, which the board also has to adopt. This is an in your packet, but it's only two pages long. Um, as we do not know what levels the legislation will fund us or what other grants we might receive, thank you, Heather. Um, in out years, this tends to be something of an estimate, but um, we do put a lot of effort into trying to come up with as accurate a projection as possible. Any questions on the Paris budget? All right. Um, do you want to vote now or do you want to vote after I do the make report? Okay, well, that, there's nothing on that to vote on. Okay, Andy and Cody. Um, Cody is away on vacation this week. He's on a cruise, so we may or may not make it back. Um, <laughs> they have prepared a report on the AHEC trail usage in 2023. We constructed and operate the Albany Hudson Electric Trail, 36 mile recreational rail trail in Rensselaer and Columbia counties. The non-motorized trail, which is part of both the Hudson River Valley Greenway Trail System and a key component of the Empire State Trail in the Hudson Valley, is 10 feet wide with gentle grades and an improved surface, welcoming bicyclists, walkers, and runners of all ages and abilities. The trail is open year-round from dawn to dusk. We deployed four counters at locations along the trail in both 2022 and 2023. The results obtained from those eight counters are Town of East Greenbush West, 45,288 visits, Town of East Greenbush Southeast, 54,555 visits, Town of Skodak, 26,059 visits, Village of Nassau, 31,798 visits, Hamlet of North Chatham, 33,379 visits, Niverville, 29,022 visits. Village of Kinderhook, 48,506 visits. And Stuyvesant Falls, 19,469 visits. Once we complete the collection, once you complete the collection of the 2024 data, we will have three full years, and at that time we feel confident we will have a good fix on what the annual trail use is. Any questions on the AHA trail use? Yes, then. What was going on in July? That might have been when the um, cycle of Hudson Valley bike tour came through, yes. Um, they had a couple of hundred riders come through that day. Yeah, it was like there was multiple, multiple counters for max on those days. Yep. Yeah. Um, and and that, Parks and Trails New York ran their first cycle of the Hudson Valley program. I think I talked about this at a prior meeting, but that was extremely successful. Um, and everybody um, had a very good time and, and they were. Um, I've been told graves about the, the AHEAD trip. So we um, actually, staff had spent a considerable amount of time the week before out um, removing brush and repairing fences that had been um, impacted from a thunderstorm the week before. Yes. Thank you, Scott. I have a question. I wonder, do we have any data on local resident use versus <coughs> tourist day trip use? No. Are, any, are, any of those trails? Are we ex 
suspect that local residences are, are, are the great bulk of it. Um, but the counters that we have, they're not cameras, they're just infrared, they shoot an infrared beam when you break the beam and count you. So if Kevin and I were walking side by side and walk by the counter, it would show us as one person. May I ask, is there any data source like that available for, for any public trails that, that you know of that we're involved with? Not that I know of. <laughs> and I see Carl laughing in the back, so you don't know either, right? Um, instead of the, all of the electric trails, will the capital district, the capital region, transportation council, they did, they do, they used to do regular surveys. Um, they would survey, you know, stand and survey people, and they would have also surveys available to go online. And that gives you some information at least for ones that are off there, not, not the only electric, but other trails with that gives you an idea. It, it's, we've looked into doing that. We don't currently have the staff available to do that. It, it involves people being out on the trail for hours at a time in one location. And it's a snapshot of one day in one location. Mm -hmm. And it's it's not nearly as conclusive as this data platform over here 24 7. So, um, Kevin, the board needs to vote on awarding the trail grants, accepting the audit, and adopting the chair.